Well hello everyone, welcome back to the Faithful You YouTube channel. It's been a while since I posted a video, it's probably been about three weeks now. Um, I'm back in my finished shed, it's completely finished and I've managed to move in now. Um, I've got my little workstation set up here and I've got a notepad at the ready for today because I'm going to be working on a new knitting video to put up this week. Uh, sorry for the delay in filming the last two videos of this series. Um, but I've had an awful lot going on with having a bad back for nearly two months and in that time I also had a sick hen as well who sadly died at the weekend. So she was 10 years old, her name was Poppy. Um, she was with me for seven years so that's been quite a sad time for me over the weekend. But uh, yeah, unfortunately I just couldn't get a better so yeah. Um, I have still got one hen, her name's Pippa and she's still here with me. She'll probably hear her clucking about at my feet because I have mealworms at the ready for her. Um, and she knows the packet. So you'll probably hear her rustling about at my feet looking for more mealworms. Um, yeah. uh, if you do like my videos please do like and subscribe. You'll find all the details of where you can find me in the description box below. Um, and leave comments in the comment section below. Uh, thank you for joining me again today. Thank you to all my new YouTube subscribers who have subscribed to my channel. I'm very grateful for your support and I'm very grateful for you tuning in to my episodes each week. Uh, please do feel free to share any of the content that you like, um, any of the content that you want to share. Please do feel free to share it any, on any of your social media as well. I'm happy to um, allow you to do that. Uh, I've been in here now probably for about two or three weeks, uh, possibly two weeks, not long after I filmed my last floor video. It only took me about a few days to get it finished, but uh, actually getting around to doing the filming with everything else that was going on has just been a nightmare. But uh, yeah, finally I've got to get around to doing the video for you and showing you it finished. I have also recorded a um, dryad floor loom video as to how to put that up as well. So I'll be editing that in the next week or so and I'll put that up for you as well. Because when I was looking around as to how to put one up, there was just no videos up there at all that I could find on YouTube as to how to put one up. So I have recorded that as well. So that's coming as well. Probably next week because it was about 45 minutes worth of footage that I took so there's a lot of editing in that to edit it down a bit for you but it was a good detailed video so I'm sure you'll look forward to seeing that as well. Um, but yeah today I'm going to be working down here and I've got some gardening to do. I've got to sort my tomatoes out in the greenhouse so I thought I'd just take these moments while I'm having a cup of tea, cup of herbal tea to um, come and do this video for you. So. So yeah, I'm going to show you what the shed's looking like show you, and uh, show you how I'm going to be working in here as well. So let's do that now. Right, so we're in the garden and this is the pathway here. This is the pathway here up to the potting shed and to the right this is my herbaceous flower border which has got some dye plants in it as well for using in the dye pot. As you can see I have an awful lot of foxgloves this year but they've been very pretty um, but maybe slightly too many. So I'm going to have to try and catch them before they go to seed but uh, I'll do a garden tour at some point as well and show you around the garden. So yeah this is the walk past the herbaceous flower border up to the potting shed. As you can see it's quite full at the moment as it, and lots of foxgloves, lots of different colours. I've just noticed that beautiful pink one. This loop in here has been absolutely amazing. It started off as a little tiny plug plant last year but it's gone absolutely bonkers this year so yeah it's been lovely. Um, let's carry on and take you up to the shed. Lovely geraniums, I didn't realise I had so many pink. Um, so yeah the um, flocks are just starting to sprout and I think I have some flower heads on them now so they're going to be coming through soon. Um, yeah, this was an azalea, it had beautiful pink flowers on it in the spring and uh, yeah they've just gone over now, they've just finished. There are one or two flower heads left on but uh, let's see if I can find you one. 
that pink there. It looks more red in the camera, but they are really, really cerise pink. Really pretty. Um, so as you can see, there's the new door. There's Pippa next door. I have tidied up a lot outside the front of the shed now. And um, we've got a Belfast sink here with some herbs in. I've got chamomile and I've got fennel in here and I think I've got some thyme and marjoram as well but they're not looking too healthy so I may need to replace them. There's Pippa in her little run waiting for her new friends to arrive which are coming on Monday. Um, you can see through the window now into the shed and then in front of the shed I've got another sink and in there I have a little rose here and then I've got fever few, I've got bronze fennel, I've got parsley and I've got thyme and then this is my shed but uh, let's go in. I'm really pleased with it, it's turned out really really well. That's the new floor which is an awful lot better than it was before, an awful lot better than it was before. Um, I'll just take my shoes off, keep it clean. Yeah, so that's my chair where I'm going to be doing my spinning. Um, and then I've got my weaving looms, my weaving loom on the wall and my weaving shuttles, my sheet picture and some storage baskets. Um, I did change my mind from the white and I have painted it a yellow colour. It is an outside paint so it should be okay with mould and things like that. That picture um, I got off my auntie for Christmas, this one here, a few years ago so that was a nice uh, gift from her. Um, yeah, As I say I did decide against the white on the walls, it was quite stark and um, I decided that because I didn't have enough paint and I was going to have to go out and buy some that I would use what we had in as part of my low spend year and we had nearly a full tin of yellow so yeah I've still got some of it left if I need to touch in the walls at any point so that was good so now they are a lovely lemon colour and um, as you come round here this is my spinning wheel it's an Ashford Kiwi so I can spit it, sit in here now when it's raining and do some spinning um, and this is my view through the window, excuse the mess that's still outside that's the view from where I work um, and this is my workbench which is an old Jones sewing table which I've had for a very long time, I've probably had that for about 20 years and then next to that is an old tea trolley that was left in the house that the elderly gentleman used um, so that's nice, that's probably 1930s, 1940s um, and then coming round there's the view out the door which is a lovely view um, and then this is my old kitchen cabinet which is again about 1920s, 1930s um, that was the old gentleman's kitchen unit, that was all he had in his kitchen so yeah, it's been well used and well loved. Um, I'll just show you the cabinet. Up here is where I will store all my weaving yarns. And um, there's two doors on that. So there's quite a lot of space in there and quite a lot does fit in. So I put all my wool cones in there. And then up the top, up the top I have my embroidery baskets and my royal tin with my slate buttons in for my Etsy shop which I sell online um, so that's the that's the top part of the cupboard and then down below that there are two doors that open out and they open quite far um, and I can store all my bits and bobs in there, like my bu my buttons for my knitting. I've got some indigo kits there. Um, yeah, I've got different bits of materials there for making up my kits that I make for my Etsy shop. And then there's little shelves in the door as well where I can store my glues and tapes and things. Um, and then the same on the other side. So I haven't got much in there on that side at the moment. So 
that's the cupboard. Oh, and then below here is a little pull-out shelf, which would have been a worktop at one point. Um, so I can use that as an extra workspace as well to put my drum card on. So that closes up like that. And then the doors will close like that. So that's the middle part. And then down below, there are a couple of drawers. So I can put tools in there. I've got tools in there. And then in the bottom one, I've got gardening tools, which is really handy, a good use and handy space for them. And then in this cupboard next to it, I can store my natural dyes, my screws, and I've got shells in there at the moment, and the weaving basket for the scarf that's on the loom on the wall. So yeah, it's a really good use of space. Um, and then next to that, I've got a spare chair for when my husband sits in here. So. That's a 1950s, 40s or 50s office chair that was also left in the house. Um, and then next to that is the fire in between the two chairs. So it is now plumbed in and it has been used and it does work quite efficiently as well. Um, so yeah, it's a really good space. It's turned out really, really well. I'm really, really pleased with it. The roof is great. I mean, look, I get the view of the rhododendron through the roof. And then I can see up through the trees as well. And then the sunlight comes in here beautifully most of the day until it disappears about three o'clock. Um, so all I've got left to do really is just to seal where the tin meets the perspex and one or two holes that are in the spare perspex from when it had screws through it in the house because the perspex came off the windows in the house. But other than that, it's all finished. So now I can sit at my chair and admire the view out the garden. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. There's the floor. Oh, I've got this lovely little stool as well, which I use for when I'm sat at my table uh, and I'm working at my new bench. So that sits under there. Um, and then on the window are just my drop spindles, which I'm going to do some a little bit of a walk through what spindles I've got as well as part of this video. So that's coming up. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you about the floor was the detail that's in it. I've put some little blocks here um, that came from my mum and dad's fireplace um, and they've turned out really nice. Over here is my little red tile which I absolutely love. I found it in the garden and uh, it's one of my favourite parts of the floor so yeah it's really cool, really nice. I've got a few other little treasures on the wall. I've got some uh, old shears from shearing sheep when they used to do it manually before the uh, time of um, electric shears and then this lovely piece of massive driftwood that I got out of the river which I'm thinking of putting on the wall so yeah so for me really is the view because even when the doors shut I still have that view to work with out across the garden and across the field to the trees at the back and the valley beyond so it is a beautiful view um, and also excuse me, obviously, also when the hens are here as you can see, I can keep an eye on them. That's Pippa there, just coming to see where the mealworms are because she had the bag. <laughs> <coughs> Hi, Pippa. So, yeah, on my window ledge here are my drop spindles. In this one here, these are my own drop spindles. I have this one which is really nice. It's got some lovely detailing in the wood around the side. Um, I particularly like this one because it was the first one that I got. Um, yeah, it's got some lovely knotting in it as well. I have started using this one. Um, I can't remember what the wood was. I think it was elm. 
either elm or ash, I can't remember. I should have a better memory really, but yeah, that's that one. And then I've got one from Spin City. She does some really nice ones. This one seems to have aged to get rid of the dust. And these ones have dried flowers in them. They're really pretty. Uh, so yeah, that's from Louise at Spin City. You'll find her on the internet. And then I've got a Turkish spindle, which I haven't used yet. Oh, I've just realised that moves. Yeah, I haven't used this one yet. This is called a Turkish spindle. Um, and then this is just an ordinary standard drop spindle. This one's quite weighty actually. But this was the first one I ever got. Um, I learned to spin on this before I got my spinning wheel. So I'd highly recommend a drop spindle for learning to spin on if that's what you want. Um, but yeah, that's a really nice drop spindle to use. So they get kept in there. And these are my usable ones. These are ones that I do use. Um, they're nice and portable, so when I go out walking, if I want to take something with me to spin near the river or up a hill or whatever, these are really handy just to fit in your backpack with a bit of fibre. Um, and then when you get there, you can spin away to your heart's content, pop it back in your bag and take it back home with you. So, yeah, these are really good spindles. These ones are from Spinspired.co.uk. She is on Etsy. And she is on eBay as well, and I think she has her own website as well. So, yeah, she, the, that's those ones, the smaller ones. So they live in that jar that I found in charity shop. As you can see, there's a bit of a vintage theme going on in here. And then this one was my Nan's pot. I think it is Rayware Pottery. Raymond, Tony Raymond Pottery, sorry, that's this one here, and this was my nan's, so this is nice to keep it in there to remind me of my nan. Um, empty that out a bit. So in here I have some drop spindles that I was looking at for making into weaving kits that were going to go in my shop, so now I've got myself settled in our new home and I've got my weaving space set up. I can uh, my working space set up. I can think about what I'm going to do for my shop. So, yeah, this was going to be um, kits, and this one actually is a really, really nice spindle because it's really, it's quite lightweight. It's a good thickness. It's made out of acacia wood. It's got a lovely colouring on the back. It needs a bit of a polish, um, but it's been kept in storage. This one is sycamore, and again, this is a thin lightweight one so that would be really nice for doing fine yarns um this one's oak and this one has a lovely bit of detail around the sides so that's that one as i say that's oak and these ones in here are bare elm um, which are a lot thicker a lot of thicker wall on the top but i think the 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 pit the shaft in the middle is the same and again, these have some nice bits of detailing in them as well. And all these are from Spinspired on the internet, as I say. Spinspired.co.uk if you're interested. Um, so these live on the window ledge. So yeah, that's my little workspace set up. I have been making already. I've done a commission for a lady down the road, which is now finished and ready to go back to her tomorrow. So that'll be nice. And I've also done this with an ornament I found in the charity shop. So, and some shells that I got from the Isle of Skye. Try not to drop anything. They are mostly stuck on. There are a few loose ones. But, uh, yeah, that turned out really well. Really pleased with that. It looks a bit like a Rapunzel tower. So, that's all made with coral from the coral beach up at the Isle of Skye and some bits of stones and bits of shells and things that I found on the beach up there on one, on one of our many visits to the Isle of Skye. So that's a nice little keepsake for me. So I can keep that there. I like all these little things around me because it just inspires me of what I want to do really, what I want to make. So yeah, so as you can see, it's a lovely space. It's nicely set up now. Um, I'm ready to start working. I've got plenty of ideas of things that I'm going to be making. 
uh, plenty of ideas for my new shop for my shop um, I'm going to be doing some orifice hooks for my spin for spinning wheels so they're at the moment in the process of being made that's for pulling you all through to, to spin so I've got quite a few of them ready to go um, and as I say I'm considering doing weaving uh, spinning kits as well with wool from local sheep so that's something else that's also in the pipeline so I've got plenty of ideas of things that I want to do to put in my shop for the autumn um, for later in the summer and the autumn so yeah so I hope you've enjoyed the tour around my shed my new my new shed and a few of the bits and bobs that I'm getting up to as I say I have got a knitting video coming out this week as well I will do that at the end of the week and yeah that'll probably go up on Friday because I'm thinking Friday is going to be a good day for me for getting myself organized and getting videos uploaded and things like that so yeah I'm hoping that by Friday I'll have a knitting video ready for you as well so I'm wearing at the moment my gingerbread sweater which is a finished object so I'll be talking about that in that video anyway I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos the series of me renovating my shed into a workspace I hope it's inspired you with what you can potentially do on no money at all because I did it for nothing basically the slate was free the paint was free the fire was free the door was free the roof was free so it cost me nothing so I hope that's inspired you to be able to do things on no, no money or very little money at all so it does fit in quite nicely with my low spend year if you do like my videos please do like and subscribe uh, to keep up to date with what's going on here at faithful you what's going to be going in the shop and uh, things that i'm getting up to here uh, i'll be able to keep you updated with the garden with the hens uh, with what i'm making with what's going on in here in my new shed um, and also please do comment in the comment section below it'd be good to be able to get to know a few people who are watching my videos um, and build a little community or a community of like-minded people making and creating things that make us happy so anyway that's it for now i'm starting to waffle again so i will see you again next time bye for now bye